right, they have announced a co-headlining tour with Stone Temple Pilots and live on the Jubilee Tour, special guest Soul Asylum. A guy named Jeff Goot has been the frontman for STP for a while now. Sounds good. They do a great job, man. The Leo Brothers, Eric Kretz behind the drums. Uh, live Soul Asylum, September 10th. It's going to happen at Blossom. These are not on sale until Friday morning. 10 o'clock, go to LiveNation.com. Uh, STP celebrating the 30th anniversary of Purple and Live celebrating the 30th anniversary of Throwing Copper. So it'll be a good show. Uh, two tickets for you. Call 10 216 578 or 800 348 this election year 2024 a big year he's committed to the real issues like dehydrated grape supply and banana peel protocols this is what people care about alan cox on 100.7 wmms This is a track that leads off purple is called Meat Plow. The second album from Stone Temple Pilots. Core had kind of come out of nowhere and um, really blown up on MTV. So by the time Purple dropped, June 7th, 1994, it was immediately number one. They sold six million copies of Purple. So it's one of the most successful sophomore releases of all time, I think. Big Empty was in The Crow. That was a big deal, right? Mm-hmm. That was in all the advertisements for The Crow. And um, Pretty Penny and Unglued. It's kind of because Core was very much them coming out and going, oh, we're in the grunge era. Mm-hmm. But Purple was a more, you could kind of see what, Stone, more Temple, dynamic, yeah. what Stone Temple Pilots was going to become, yeah. And uh, Lounge Fly got played a lot, like MTV News and things yeah. like the Interstate Love Song of Vaseline. Oh, and so, yeah, Purple's a great, great album. So they will now, I don't know if that means they're going to do it in its entirety. You know, when, when they, when bands say, oh, we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of X, Y, and Z, like I'll have those Newfound Glory tickets about a half an hour if you dig those guys. And they're going to be doing Catalyst in its entirety. Again, I'm not familiar with that album, but. Uh, 20 years ago, a big, big deal for them. So they're going to do all that. I don't know if that means STP will do purple front to back or if live will do throwing copper front to back. But I guess you'll find out. And then Soul Asylum. Runaway Train, right? Dave Perner. Back in the day, people got to know who Dave Perner was even if he didn't, even if you weren't hip to Soul Asylum. Why? Why did... Uh, the general public know who Dave Perner was. Anyone? Because he was uh, in a long line of um, the hipsters of the day who would date Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder was dating all kinds of different dudes, and Dave Perner was one of them. He had all of the uh, kind of um, unkempt white boy dreadlocks at the time. And I guess that was uh, right up Winona Ryder's alley. So, as you might expect, that's leading a lot of people to go, hey, do you think Winona Ryder will be at the Blossom Show? And unequivocally, I have answered each and every person to ask me that, yes. I think you can count on that. Did you buy a Powerball ticket? You care about that stuff? Uh, You know what? I was buying them last year a couple times, but I have not. Bought one for this upcoming one. That's eight hundred seventy-five million dollars for the Mega Millions. Powerball six hundred million dollars. You could relocate Arrowhead Stadium for that amount of money. You could really kick in if you are a, you know, all the things that people talk about what they would do with that amount of money if you won a nine-figure lottery, right? There ha- I would love to see a situation where, like, somebody wins that, and then they have a meeting 
with whatever their favorite sports team's organization is and says, I would like to become not like a minority owner, but I would like to become like, I'm going to give you this much money. I won $600 million. I'm taking home, let's say, 430 I'm going to give you half of it for me to be able to make decisions. I'm talking about like the die hardest of a die hard sports fan. I'd like to see a situation where somebody goes, walks up, you know, you call Jimmy Haslam and you go, I'm going to give you $200 million, but you're going to let me make some decisions. Because everybody thinks that they know better than the people in the front office. That's, that's true of any organization. It's true of any fan base. Cleveland Brown fans to, are no different. I, I could do better than that. I think you got to get controlling interest if you want to make decisions. Well, I'm just saying short of uh, – nobody's going to give up a controlling interest in their own team. I'm just saying that if you cut them a check for a couple hundred million dollars, they would give you more consideration than just a parking spot at the venue. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I want to be – I don't know. So if you play these, and some people play them religiously, but it always seems to be the people who don't play religiously who win. So that's got to really feed into maybe that gambler's mentality or people who are so deadly serious on playing all these. Because it's always like, oh, the guy who won was going to pick up his wife. And he, he was at a, to stop it. Yeah, yeah. He was at a red light, and he's like, ah, man, I'll go in there. Well, I'll buy a ticket. What do I care? <laughs> What is that accent? Well, no, it's just a guy like Mr. he doesn't Cotter. care. Hey, man, I, Mr. K- give me drugs. Mr. Sweat hugs. Mr. Cotter. <laughs> yeah. So um, the last handful of tickets have been sold in South Carolina, Michigan, Illinois, Maine, and Florida. Um, so so somebody, somebody so in nice. New York uh, won a million dollars on Friday night, but you know, but people always say, "Well, here's what I would do with that money." And I have to say, I really, and maybe it's just, maybe it's just as the, uh, as our empire in decline continues in, in the direction it's been in, but I feel like more and more people who win those big sums of money have had uh, maybe more, um, maybe more egalitarian uses for them over the past few years. I mean, there was the dude in California who won, like, a billion dollars, and so he bought, like, you know, he bought, like, four different houses in LA or something because it's more money than he ever knows what to do with. But I feel like every time they talk to somebody who doesn't stay anonymous, they go, what are you going to do with the money? People are like, oh, I'm going to give it to these charity organizations that I like. Now, I take them at their word. There's no way to know that, but um, I like to hear that. If you listen to us on iHeartRadio, you can always leave messages there. If you watch the show live at alancockshow.com today, you can thank Henry Chekelchaffee for assisting in the video department. Henry. Normally, I'd expect a Henry, but that's a Henry. Yeah. Henry Chekelchaffee. So thanks so much. By the way, through the month of March, Bill and I have been doing these Bud Light appearances for the March Mini Hoops Challenge, and I, if you have joined us along the way... Uh, maybe you got yourself qualified because the finals are this Saturday. I'm going to be your host for that. So, But you don't have to be a qualifier for this thing, by the way. I mean, we're going to need people to cheer these people on. And there might be people that don't show up. So, yeah. yeah we're going to draw and, alternates. I mean, yeah. what are the chances that everybody's going to show up? Probably slim. So uh, there's an opportunity possibly for you to swoop in on a chandelier and win the whole thing. Because then whoever wins Saturday goes to Vegas and competes for $10,000. Which, I won't lie to you, seems light for... Uh, for a nationwide w- contest? Yes, yeah. for winning the Mini Hoops Finals in Vegas. Ten grand. Anyway, I'll be your host on Saturday. We're going to be at On Tap Grill and Bar in Medina. We'll start at 2 o'clock. And uh, I'd love to have a huge crowd there. We'll hang out, we'll have some pops, and we'll watch people taking their shots. Trying to make history. Did you know that? That people will be making history? They're making history. Making history. I mean, we're all history. making history all the time. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. These people will be making history in that they will be there at a time and place they've never been before. Soul Asylum are from Minneapolis. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah that, yes, that is True. a that is a random yeah. uh yes, thank you. Uh random, but uh still good. Podcast listener from a couple days behind. I also took dinosaurs at University of Akron for the one credit I needed and it was so hard. So I co signed Cake. Um the teacher was really irritated with the over full class um that just wanted to learn about Jurassic Park and really stupid stuff. So he made it extra hard so we take it more seriously. It's a show and love you. Bye. Bye. That had to be what it was. Well, because everyone thinks that that a one credit class is a breeze course. I know I did. And I well, like, it should be we're, easier. We're gonna be watching Land Before Time and Jurassic Park and well, no, the you're not in dinosaur. fifth grade. But it's a one credit class, but it's still a college class, bro. They got classes on Star Wars and like movie. Review oh, I classes. know, I know, but those, so, yeah, okay. and those classes are worth like two or three cl- credits. You're talking about a one credit class that's a half a semester. It's six weeks. And they're like, yeah, but, but okay, but listen, but you still, there's like a, it was a filler class. I know, but what I'm saying is when you sign up for the class or when you're looking at classes, there's like the synopsis of the class. Yeah, the synops- it didn't say we're going to watch the land before time or Jurassic Park. It didn't say we we're going to have a, an entire chapter on 20 million year old poop either. <laughs> I feel bad for the professor. No, he he was fine. He I no, no. I'm just saying. Really I, I, passionate about it. I know. I'm just saying that, like, if you're teaching a, and I'm sure they're spread out. I'm sure he was teaching just as many three credit courses. But if you're teaching a one credit class, like, you want to give it the same attention as the other ones. But you know the students are coming there because they they only need a credit, so they're coming there. Everybody did it right. You, I don't, I don't remember what I, I don't remember what I was doing, but. Um, Everybody's looking for those. They're like, I just need two one credit classes and I'm out of here. But the professor is not, again, it's not fifth grade. You're not going to be watching Jurassic Park. Man, whatever. There's nothing to learn from Jurassic Park. Can you count how many uh, scales he has on, on his body? You know, <laughs> how or many the, scales? How, how many teeth the, the T Rex uh, has? But like, you would learn that from a textbook. How are you going to learn that from Jurassic Park? Make it interesting, right? And, and it, 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 it intrigued me. I thought it was an interesting class. I'm sure that that professor, that's not the only class he teaches, but it was like first day, immediately like, hey, if you don't like, this is what the, how the class is gonna go. If you don't like it, then you're gonna leave. I'm like, oh, right. And I'm like, I, I already registered for the class. I I had like, you know, timed or summed up my entire class or my entire semester. With needing this amount of credits, I was like, I can't back out. I gotta take it. You couldn't get another single credit class. No, those are really hard to come by, and they because they fill up really fast. So they only offer them like once, at least back when I did it, it they were they filled really fast. So your class, like, like she described, your class was like over full too. I don't know if it was over full, but it was full for sure. Like yeah. it was like we had it in a big lecture hall. It was like like two hundred people maybe. <laughs> Right. And that's what I mean. Like, the professor knows people. People aren't in there to learn about dinosaurs. They were like, this is the one credit class I could get into, and all the other ones were full. I mean, I I chose Process of elimination. Some of those people ended up in dinosaurs. I I find it interesting. It was just... It, w- but it were was there- so in-depth for, for the amount of credit that you get. I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> but what I'm saying is over the course of your tenure at the University of Akron, that couldn't have been the only single credit class you took. No, I had another one. Were I- the other ones as easy as you had hoped they would be? Yes. God, it, it's so much so that I can't remember the other one credit class. Because there was only a couple offered. Uh, Dinosaurs was one, and Oceans was a three-credit class. So uh, that one was not a- there was another. There, there had to be another one. I think it may have been like a creative writing class or something. Something that was like, oh, it's breeze course, like you know, uh, chill out. Like I don't remember what it was, but those six weeks classes will get you. Like, and it, it is the biggest troll. I give the professor credit, uh, not three credits, but I give him credit <laughs> that everyone came in there thinking that they're going to be like, oh, a triceratops, and you know, what does this dinosaur eat, and blah 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 blah. That was not what it was. <laughs> it was not. I was like, oh, crap, I actually got to study for this. Like, yep, your test is uh, a week from now. I'm like, a week? We just started today. We got homework. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, 
<laughs> well, she agrees with you. Mm-hmm. She co-signed. Yeah, I, I don't remember what my other one credit class was, but it, it was something like maybe movie related or writing related. I don't remember what it was. But that was the hardest one for sure. Somebody texted, <laughs> ah, yes, the scientifically accurate movie Jurassic Park. Right. I don't care. <laughs> I was hoping to watch Jurassic Park and learn something like it's a documentary. Just because it had David Attenborough in it or Richard Attenborough in it or whoever. You you think the stuff that you watch on the History Channel or Natural Ge- uh, National Geographic is like super credible too? Like they're Yes, all- those are scientific documentaries. But they still live and die by ratings, so they got to make it some some that, No, no, no. Is. National Geographic Channel does not live and die by ratings, trust mm-hmm. me. The only reason that's still on is because they have underwriters and because they're part of a giant corporation, part of Discovery or whatever. I they think don't they don't need to worry Disney about ratings. Now, aren't they? At, I think so, yeah. They don't have to worry about ratings at all. And thank God for that, because all those scientific channels would go away because there wouldn't be enough people to keep them afloat. But, yeah, no, those are documentaries is what you're talking about. Alan, I took a class at Tri-C called The Nightmare Never Ends. It was a class about the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Right, but that's Tri-C with respect. I mean, you know. But it is interesting, man. When I was in school, I don't remember pop culture classes. Or at least I never took. I mean, maybe they existed, but holy cow. I mean, people are like, oh, I took, um, you know, these colleges that are offering Britney Spears courses. I'm yeah. Like, oh, okay. I mean, God bless. I don't know yeah. what you're going to do with that. but Again, we had the Star Wars class. We had a bunch of other ones. And how did you do in the Star Wars class? I didn't. I didn't take it. I'm just saying. I know oh, it was, it was available. I see. No, I again. Like I. You had, thought dinosaurs was hard. If you had taken a Star Wars class, that would have been really hard, because you don't know anything about Star Wars. Yeah, at, at all. Right. No, but like those, when you get those pop culture classes, th- those are usually like the one credit classes where it's like, oh, well, this is just something fun. After you have like a long day of classes, you want a class that is both interesting. And entertaining, and not that hard. Like you're not expecting. Yeah, you don't want to be stressing over it. Three three credit homework over a one credit <laughs> class. You know, <laughs> like you don't want a class. It's, it's in, it, I can't tell you how like stress free it is to walk into a class where you're like, oh, my friends in this class, the teacher's cool. Like we're probably watch a movie today. Like he don't care if I text. You know, <laughs> I, he don't care if I look at my phone. One of those classes. But are those usually TAs though? So or sometimes? full professor. I think the professor wouldn't care. Really. They, they're just uh, somebody's playing Minecraft in front of you. <laughs> they got their laptop open. Someone's building a, a house of cards next to you. Those type of classes are fun. I guess I'm just always like you're paying for this class. But you, you're gonna take a one credit class regardless. So you might as well take one that's gonna you're gonna enjoy, like a one credit class. Yeah, but you thought you were gonna enjoy dinosaurs. I. I <laughs> How do you yeah. know till you get in there? Exactly. Couldn't you have asked somebody that had already taken it? You couldn't find anybody that he knew? wasn't going to do that. I, I didn't know somebody that, that took it already. Um, and plus, that that could screw you up, too. Like Because I asked the girl who took Oceans, and she was like, oh, yeah, take Oceans. She was like, it's fine. And then I was like, bitch, what did you get me into? She was like, oh, it's hard for you? <laughs> and she was a high school student. Um, oh, right. <laughs> the Oceans. Yeah, she, she was like, oh, well, I forgot. She was like, I'm smart. She was like, I, <laughs> I forgot you're stupid. <laughs> well, she was, she, she was uh, early college, so she was like, I forgot that I'm smart. She was like, so it was easy for me. I said, okay. Alan, I took intro to the internet as a one-credit course. Jesus, that person might be older than me. Intro to the internet. How to surf the World Wide Web. Surf, All that early mid-90s web. Yeah. <laughs> 90s stuff. Mike from Parma suggests that you should have tried the Dinosaur Junior class first. Did they offer that as a one-credit no. course? No? That no. would rule. Yeah. Feeling the pain mm-hmm. is what it was called, I believe. You usually try to, if you can. He doesn't even get it. It's okay. That was for us. Uh, go ahead. I was going to say, usually if you can, you try to get a one-credit class in your school, like in your pertaining to your major, if you can. Sometimes they fill up really, really fast because the seniors or juniors – need those to graduate or like again they don't want to stress fee- they want a stress free class mm. so it just depends dinosaurs is what i landed on and i was like Ooh, okay well got it out of the way Ooh, this might be my next karaoke song feel the pain i feel
Anybody play Walk the Dinosaur in your class from Was Not Was? Mm-hmm. Open the door, get on the floor, everybody walk the dinosaur. Nobody did that? He's on the phone, it looks oh, like. Oh, okay, well, all right. I got a break anyway. It's okay. Um, aren't these guys on the road or something? Dinosaur Jr. going uh, back out? They tour pretty regularly, so. I they were I coming they to... were just here in, like, uh, October or something. Oh, were they? I Maybe that's what I'm thinking I don't of. know, but... I would love to see them live. They're playing in the fall with Weezer and the Flaming Lips. Oh, where at? Uh, they're playing Columbus, Chicago, Toronto, Boston, like first week of September. You can go to Columbus and see Columbus them. Columbus would be 